Welcome to Jags Drive Time with John Osher and Brian Sexton. Sexton. Jags Drive Time starts right now. Hey, Merry Christmas. Early Christmas present, y'all saying? From the But listen, you, you guys, what you what 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 I love about you guys right now is that is that's what it takes. That's what it takes, right? It takes a little sacrifice. We talked about it way back in the offseason. What are you willing to sacrifice for this football team? And, and sometimes it's even your body, right? It's your body, right? And in D-line, O-line, everybody, it's a physical football game. My hat is off to every single one of you. We knew this wasn't going to be pretty with the weather and everything else. We've got two games left in our division, right? Two games. You come back off this holiday, your mind is right. You're ready to rock and roll, put the work in, put the time in, and let's finish this thing the right way. Let's finish it the right way. Again, my hat is off to you. I'm so proud of this group. You hang, on, you hang in there and you battle. You guys, you guys listen, you're doing the right thing at the right time of the season. Okay, I'm telling you. Right? And great things are going to continue to happen to this football team. All right? Proud of you. Proud of you, proud of you, proud of you. All right, let's bring it up. Cool. Let's get out of here now. Dad. 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 Good morning. Happy Monday to you, and we hope that you all had a wonderful Christmas weekend. Certainly a Thursday night primetime win over the Jets, moving the Jaguars into position to go to first place on Saturday when the Texans beat the Titans. Well, it doesn't get a lot merrier than that if you're a Jaguars fan. Welcome in, Brian Sexton, along with John Osier on a Monday. Would you say that the Jaguars' run here to the fourth slot in the playoffs was inevitable this season with the division the way that it is or improbable? Um, What's the better word to describe it? it? It could be described as both, to be honest with you. I, If you're looking at it from the perspective of October flying back from London, very improbable. Correct. Um, in retrospect, maybe, I can't say inevitable because you can't expect a team to lose five straight like the Titans. Uh, even though a lot of people spent the first part of the season saying, oh, the Titans aren't very good. Well, they won five straight at one point. Right. So they're not a well, it was bet. me. I didn't think the Titans were very good, and I said it on this show, and yeah. then they went into that winning streak, and the Jaguars, the losing streak, and I thought, well, they're not there yet then. Right. And, uh, no, I mean, I expected this team this year to win six to eight games. And I, and I usually said six or seven. Uh, but I expected the Jaguars to, by the end of the season – be winning some games this time of year and feel very good about the quarterback and very good about the future. I didn't expect the future to arrive so soon. No. And but it's here. And uh they're legit I mean, uh, we'll talk about Doug Peterson a little bit, but it, uh before we get on, who wouldn't want to play for the guy who was just talking in that video? It's so different than it was a year ago. Well, it, it's different than it was a year ago, but there are little things he does that shouldn't be hard for NFL coaches to do, but so many of them just don't get it. Hey, man, you got to sacrifice, and sometimes it's your bodies. Well, in about two or three words, he summed up what he asked them to do all week, which is go win on a Thursday night where it's tough. Uh, you know, players don't like Thursday night football. It, it, you're going and doing, and he is just such a natural leader combined with getting what the league is yeah. and understanding how to navigate this uh he you know everything else going on trevor's the biggest reason why what's going on is going on but leadership in that position is so important in this league and he's a plus and you know unique is a word that gets used way too often but he is unique in the sense that when you look at him today you see super bowl rings as a head coach right and as a player it was a backup with the packers when they won back in uh, after the 96 season but he came into the league as an undrafted rookie and he was on and off the dolphins roster a half a dozen times so he can relate to everyone in the locker room he's got that sense of what every single player has done or has to do he really is a, a a unique yeah. head coach in that sense. One final thought on him, and I was trying to explain to somebody this weekend uh, who I saw why he was why he's such a good coach. The reason he's a good coach is he's he's a major reason they're succeeding, 
and he doesn't act like he's no. a major reason no. uh, they're succeeding. Yeah, it's fun. It's he fun. doesn't think it's all about him. He doesn't act like, oh, boy, I'm the guy. But without him, nothing works. I was just about to say. They talk, people talk about the Jaguars not being a team that other teams want to see right now. Yeah. I think Doug Peterson's the coach that other coaches don't want to coach against right well, now. Well, and he, he is a coach for this era of the NFL. Yeah. Um, leaves it to the you know, sort of makes the players think it's all about them because it is, but he's sort of guiding it. Strong hand the guy on the behind shoulder. the curtain, so yeah. to speak. And he, he, he's awfully good at it. All right, let's jump into big things here on Monday morning. Big week ahead as the Jaguars get set to take on the Texans on Sunday. We'll talk a lot about that nine-game losing streak. But it starts with first place in the AFC South. That's where the Jaguars are as things stand today. First place. Yeah, I mean, remarkable they were in that position to begin with. And then, of course, when the Texans beat the Titans on Saturday evening in Nashville and they started moving up the graphic and you see the Jaguars in the playoffs, it's a very gratifying thing for Jaguars fans who've waited for that for a long time. The head coach, though, isn't taking it for granted. We haven't we haven't done anything. We haven't clinched anything. We haven't you know won anything. We still got two games left. We got two division games, you know, left. Um, I do want them to enjoy the holidays, you know, enjoy Christmas with their family and, and friends, and, and 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 just it's time to time to heal and get healthy, you know, for this final final two game stretch. But um, you know, I also want them to, to come back, right frame of mind next week, and and get ready for a, for a team that, that that beat us, a, you know, a couple months ago. So for big thing two, the voice of Dave Wydell was ringing in my ears, uh, Good. my head. Sorry yeah. About that. Well, you remember that uh, that that early morning after the Jaguars won in Denver in January of 1997, and he said, "Jaguars, do you believe?" And that's it. Do you believe it? I mean, the Jaguars were coming back from London two and six. You know, they lost five straight games, including a couple against teams they should have beaten, and yet you just you, you knew that the toughest part of the schedule was still ahead. You know, when you look at what the Jaguars have beaten, right, the Ravens and the Jets and the Cowboys, I mean, it's just the Titans. All teams who were in it. It's been a wonderful run, and uh, the quarterback says that this team believes in themselves. I think that makes it even better, to be honest, just to see kind of what we battled through, the ups and downs. I mean, <clears throat> I've said it before, this team lost five straight in uh, October, so to look at just where we were and, and where we are now and by no means have we arrived. We got two big games in front of us and we hadn't done anything yet. You know, we still got a lot of work. We still got our work cut out for us. So, but just to see how the team's grown, um, how we've stuck together, you know, especially just the staff and, and the coaches, the confidence they've had in us. I've, I've said it a couple of times. I think, you know, the staff and especially Coach Peterson has had belief in us, even when maybe we didn't at the beginning, you know, things were crazy. And I think just him having that confidence in us is we kind of realized like, we have something special here, and uh, we had to kind of figure out what we wanted to do before it got too late. And, you know, we made adjustments and really started playing our best ball at the right time. I'm certainly a big believer in that sweater, by the way. Uh, final thing. Jacks are 7-8, and eight, played 15 games. It's a 17-game season. Connecting the dots between Doug and Trevor and their comments about what lies ahead. The questions posed to Josh Allen. Can the Jaguars finish the race? What a great feeling this is, man, to, 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 just to do what we said we was going to do, man. So now we just got to finish these last two, man. We'll finish this one, that next one. Houston, big divisional game for us, must-win game. Uh, so the attention to details and the sense of urgency is still up high. Uh, we just know we got a little time to rest and get our bodies back right. Uh, that's the only thing that we can do, and uh, you know, get ready to go back to Houston. And so there you have it, big things on a Monday morning. I want to go to big thing too, John. Because I want people to appreciate, if they haven't taken the time to look at the situations and the teams the Jaguars have beaten, let's show you the Jaguars game by game here. You know, the Raiders were strug struggling when the Jaguars faced them. But, you know, you look at the Ravens, they were in, in the division lead that particular day. Uh, the Titans were in the lead that particular day. Uh, the Cowboys were just a game behind and still very much playing for the division title in the NFC East. And, you know, the Jets were 7-7 seven and seven and still involved in the playoff race. Every one of those wins is a game in a meaningful situation for both teams, not just the Jaguars. It, it's been remarkable. And really the two losses were to teams that make the argument they were in the top five hottest teams in the NFL at the time when they played them. I mean, Kansas City is one of the best, what, uh, two or three teams Without in the a league. Doubt. And the Lions, when the Jaguars played them, were in the middle of, of of getting their season back together. They're certainly one of the most potent offenses in the league. Yeah, so uh, 
I had written, I believe, um, I want to say it was, it was before the Titans game or right after the Titans game, and I had uh, I was starting to write a little bit about well, the playoffs are a possibility, et cetera, et cetera. This is a, a meaningful game in December. Right. You know, I thrown that phrase out, and somebody said, "Well, you can't say that because they're under five hundred. The only reason it's meaningful." But uh, and my response and my thought after I thought about it was, "Well, no." Um, I get that they had played poorly for the first eight games, you know. But at that point, they were earning their way back into it. And it, it's to your point, they were beating teams that mattered to get back into it. Yeah, uh, to get back into it, if you'd been playing uh, two and ten teams, maybe you can make that argument. But they they earned their way back into it by beating Tennessee, by beating Baltimore, by beating. Uh, uh, the Dallas Cowboys and the Jets, those teams all needed those games yep. for their own season. And anytime you're playing, it's why you can say what you want about the Titans uh, losing uh, five straight, six straight, whatever it's going to be. When you're playing a team that is playing for its life, it is hard. And they've done that four times, and they've won four games. The five. only time in this stretch will be next Sunday when they're in Houston against right. a, a, a Texans team – that has nothing to play for except pride, and you see what they did against Kansas City and Dallas, and it finally paid off against. But they understandably the believe that they can win. They're pretty good against this team. Oh, nine in a row. Yeah. So yeah. all these guys. I mean, the Titans, the way NFL players think, the uh, Texans are over in Houston saying, "Well, we always beat these guys." One hundred percent. Real quick, I want to show you the graphic of the playoff, just so we can sort of revel in it for a moment, because we've been talking about this, John, since July, about just. Get this team on the graphic, right, after Thanksgiving. Well, here we are now after Christmas. They're not on the graphic in the sense that we were talking about. We were talking about in the hunt, right, mm -hmm. outside the wild card. Yeah, they're firmly on the graphic as it stands. Yeah, let the right other teams be now. in the hunt, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's been an amazing couple of weeks, and they're still potentially – an amazing few weeks in front of this team. Let's go back and look at the game. We have highlights just to relive last Thursday night's win in New York over the Jets when we return to Jags drive time from TIAA Bank Field here in Jacksonville on a Monday morning after Christmas. Jaguars fans, huddle up for the best defense against expensive car repairs, CarShield. Score big with the nation's number one automotive protection company, CarShield. They offer affordable plans that cover over 6,000 parts and systems in your car, truck, or SUV. Don't miss any Jaguars action this season with a car breakdown. Call the MVPs at CarShield for the best coverage ever. Call 800-471-1223. 800-471-1223. Go Jags! A Dream Finders home is an amazing way to celebrate the holidays. Unwrap your family's future in a new St. John's County community like Shearwater or Beacon Lake as 2022 comes to a close and 2023 awaits. What could be better than an expertly built, energy efficient, move in ready Dream Finders home to enjoy everything that makes the holiday season merry and bright? How about an interest rate lock special from Dream Finders, which will secure your new home at a big savings? It's the holiday gift that keeps on giving. Happy holidays to all from Dream Finders Homes. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Frank Franzi here. When you want barbecue in Jacksonville, you want Bono's Pit Barbecue. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field because Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Bono's is currently expanding its brand with franchise opportunities throughout the Southeast and beyond. Over 70 years of authentic Southern Pit Barbecue and owning your own business are a great combo. Go to Bono'sBarBQ.com to learn more or call 904-880-8310 today. And remember, if you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. And we welcome you back into Jags Drive Time. Brian Sexton and John Osier. We know you've probably watched these over and over and over, but without some commentary so that's what we're here to provide this morning. So let's go right to the highlights. And we begin with the third play of the game, John. And I know that there were a lot of Jaguars fans that probably said the same thing as you and I and people around the press box. Oh, we're going to do this again. Right. Play from behind. Lawrence, with his first pass of the night, but won't get it off. The ball is now out. Brad Allen is there to signal. They call it a fumble. 
Jacksonville thinks they've retained position, but Allen says no, it's the Jets' ball. Third and five. Under pressure, and down he goes. Coming in almost untouched, Andre Sisko. So in the span of six plays... Big play there by Sisko. Yeah, yeah, in the span of six plays, you go from, uh-oh, we're going to do this again to, no, we're not, right? Yeah. The way that the defense stood tall. Yeah, I thought it was really impressive um, and showed, well, first of all, the Jets' offense is really struggling, so that helped. But it showed that it was more a case of, okay, well, that wasn't a great start, but we're not going to let it impact and uh, – Define the game right. for us, and and I thought the next couple of drives, and I'm sure we're going to show, we show a couple really drives. showed that. Well, let's go right to it. Evan Ingram is the theme for the next couple of drives. Obviously, the Jaguars' tight end knows that stadium very well and is playing as well as any tight end in football not named Travis Kelsey. And the last couple of weeks, maybe as well as a guy named Travis Kelsey. Let's go. Here's Travis Kelsey with a 22 yard catch. Let's see what he sent in. Play fake, and then the pass is caught here, and Ingram picks up the first down. They don't go Gardner's way at all. And meanwhile, big hole here, and he almost lost the ball, but takes it to the 20-yard line behind a Walker Little block. Left tackle helping to lead the way. That's a gain of 19. 32-yard attempt, and as we say, nothing's going to be easy tonight. That one is just good inside the left upright. So Ingram is a theme throughout this whole process, and obviously this is brilliant play calling. Absolutely. Um, I thought Doug and Press Taylor, the offensive staff, on in that game, I, I thought the offense was remarkably good. And I asked Doug in the, uh, in the post-game press conference, I said, well, you, uh, you know, and I made sure I said you only scored 19, <laughs> but you had to be pleased with that effort in those conditions against that defense. They had, I think it was six drives of 40 or more yards. Yeah. They were able to, when they got the ball, flip the field, go get field goals, keep the game their game, the entire game, in, in really difficult conditions. And uh, I thought... I think we're going to show the 96-yard drive here next. Show a couple plays off of it, sure. Um, I tweeted out, um, I thought that was the best drive they've had all season. And somebody came back and said, well, it was the longest, but it wasn't the best. How can you say it was the best? It was the best because they faced one third down. Yeah. It was was when they scored. And it was in those conditions, in that circumstance, where you needed a drive to say – Okay, this is going to be our game now. You're starting on your own four right. in those conditions. Game was over after that. You could feel the air leaving. But on your own four in those conditions, in, in those conditions, that's ripe for a turnover. And usually, it's advantage defense. And the Jaguars' offense was good enough and efficient enough and confident enough to have a really good drive. By the way. That's a top five defense we're right. talking about. This isn't a defense near the bottom of the standings. So let's go to that 96-yard drive, 16 plays off the uh, the four-yard line with the game tied at three. Really important, here's Evan Ingram making another play. Quick throw, and another first down as the catch is made here by Evan Ingram. Final minute of the quarter. Game tied at three, second and ten. Lawrence throws, and that is caught for another first down. Great looking drive here. This time it is Dan Arnold. Third down and goal from inside the one. Diving, the ball comes out, but he was over the line. He had possession as he crossed the goal line. So it is a touchdown. So here's what what I love. Drive eight, 19 to go. In both situations here where they go with the tight end, they're thrown in the direction of Sauce Gardner, right? Yeah. The guy that, that had been declared the best young corner in the game this year, they're not scared. That quarterback doesn't care. Yeah, it. it uh, again, I, I'm not one to, hey, hey, I tweeted out, I said this. As I've gotten further from the game, I, I was prouder and prouder of that tweet, and I'm a big tweet guy, Brian. I, but, I know um, that. It, because I really thought, if you thought about the circumstances of this drive, with a still sort of teetering on do people want to believe in this team or not, they're 
four minutes to go in the first quarter when it starts, and you are in a situation where the game can get away from you and it can feel close if you don't if you don't execute. To me, that drive was the moment that I thought to myself, this Jaguars offense can go execute against whoever it wants to go execute against. No, f- no third downs on that drive in those conditions coming out of your own six or your, or your own four. Um, I, I thought the team uh, showed it had grown up. We've seen in some, those moments. We've seen some long drives from this team this year. We've seen some long drives in key situations, but that one stands out as the best. Yeah, the circumstances, the opponent, uh, maybe being on TV a little bit, you know, yeah. showing, hey, we're good, folks. And you can say what you want about the record, but this team's going to be a tough team to beat. And Tennessee might beat them. I'm not saying that they're going to the playoffs automatically because that game's tough, but. If you're playing this team, you're going to worry about them the rest of the way. So there are the highlights. We could keep going, but it it, it involves, my run sheet here says, uh, Ingram catch, Riley Patterson field goal. Ingram catch, Riley Patterson field goal. I mean, they just kept doing the simple things that turned into a 19-3 to win. So we'll leave it at that. Take a quick break. You have a thought? Well, uh, credit to Riley Patterson for that game, yeah. too. Um, I talked to him after the game, and I don't always talk to kickers after the game because if they don't do something – uh, then you don't talk to him. But four field goals out of five, and he was mad at himself for uh, missing the one at the end of the first half, thought he should have hit it. And I I don't know Riley that well, but he didn't really seem given to sort of making excuses, but I asked him if it was tough. The conditions were tough to kick in that night, to make four of five in those conditions. Yeah. When it's a field goal game, You know, every field goal he had, was changing the circumstance of the game because it would get okay we got to get tied and then okay now 13 to 3 means we're up 10 and that makes it really hard all big kicks i thought it was an impressive effort by him sure was and when we come back we'll have another impressive effort for you we've got hot takes coming up on jags drive time Jaguars fans, huddle up for the best defense against expensive car repairs, CarShield. Score big with the nation's number one automotive protection company, CarShield. They offer affordable plans that cover over 6,000 parts and systems in your car, truck, or SUV. Don't miss any Jaguars action this season with a car breakdown. Call the MVPs at CarShield for the best coverage ever. Call 800-471-1223. 800-471-1223. Go Jags! Your hometown gate now has more ways to save. Introducing My Gate Rewards, a new loyalty program with member-exclusive savings and fuel discounts. Earn points on in-store purchases, take advantage of special offers, and save on products you love. Score free coffee, fountain drinks, pizza, and soft serve with Gate's frequent shopper clubs. Then use your points on savings at the pump. Download the My Gate Rewards app in the App Store today, or ask a store associate for more information. Go from good to gate. Jags fans, this is Shaquille Griffin. I'm going to share some of my secrets for competing in the NFL. First, the field is no place for hunger. Growing up, I got big and strong eating boiled peanuts. Today, our team is serious about fueling our bodies, and that means popping open some protein-packed peanuts from Luray's Peanuts. It's the same boiled peanut flavor I used to love eating as a kid, but with superfood nutrition that lets me tear it up on the field, pick Luray's boiled peanuts at all Jaguar home games, or pick up a few bags at the grocery store and fuel up at home. Call CarShield now. If your car is out of manufacturer's warranty, don't get stuck with expensive mechanical and computer screen repairs. Call our friends at CarShield now. Brian and John back with you here on a Monday morning edition of Drive Time. We'll be back this week on Wednesday and Thursday in advance of the Jaguars' big AFC South showdown with the Houston Texans, and we've got a lot to talk about there. But first, how about hot takes from last week, John? And let's Roll the clock back to Thursday night. What you got? I need to read mine. Is there a great? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's Christmas. A little eggnog. Um, this is only the beginning. And uh, there's a few fans who are writing me sort of talking about unlikely and how great this is and what a great feeling it is. And it is. It's a great feeling. But I think what's really cool for this fan base is um, 
I think whatever happens this season is great. Um, but it feels like 96 in the sense that after 96, remember, they went – they had 97, which is obvious because it's the next year. I recall that. But 11-5 and five the next season. 11-5 and five the next season with a division title. 14-2 and two the next season. You felt like they had – 96 was not only spectacular – but it was cool in Jaguars lore for fans because it started something that was very memorable and a very cool uh, stretch. Uh, this is, to me, feels different than 17 for that reason. I don't think there's any doubt that, I don't know what records are going to be in the future, but with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback and the foundation being around him, uh, you are going to be competitive. We are out of the abyss around here. Yeah, You've always used the the analogy of, your foot stuck in the mud, and right. how hard when you get into that it is to pull it out. It's out. This is the Jaguars' division. When you look at the AFC South, I don't think we know enough about Malik Willis, but I think we know that the rent a quarterback situation in Indy is not going to be yeah. able to. They've got to change that. They've got to draft somebody this year. Uh, and the situation in Houston is they'll get their quarterback, but then we'll have to wait and see. Did they get the right one? And how long does it take for Bryant Young if he's the guy to develop? The Jaguars are in a situation. They've got the quarterback, which means they got the division. Yeah, they're becoming a team. Um, it, it, again, we're not there yet, but you can see it on the horizon. It always sort of makes me smile when people talk about, well, you should build to beat Team X, and you should build to beat Team Y, and build your team. Well, to me, I always say, well, why don't you just build to be great and let other teams worry about beating you? And when you've got the quarterback, then you can start saying, you know, do you really think, for instance – do the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes worry about building to beat somebody? No, they're the perfect example. Because or do they just go say, hey, we're going to win. Do the Bills worry about beating certain teams? I wonder if the Bills think about Kansas City because that's the team that's knocked them out the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, but I think those teams, you know, the problem with building to beat a team is what if that team loses? Yeah. And then you got to go beat another team. Well, just build to be the best. Right. And when you have a quarterback like this, you have a chance to go build to be the best. And I think that's what, you know, I don't know. You're probably going to win 10 straight division titles, all that, all that stuff. But they're going to have a really good chance yeah. to be in it every year. And, I, and I'd be surprised if they're not competitive moving forward. All right. So here's mine. And there's a lot of different ways to say this, right? You could say it's the best Jaguars free agent class ever. Well, they spent $175 million, So if, if you're watching this, yeah, no duh. Of course you're, you're going to be able to call it that. Um this free agent class, and we've always pointed to that one with Calais and A.J. Boye um, as being the free agent class, the one of record, uh, but this one's better. And so, in a sense, this could also say some folks owe Trent Bulky an apology um, because he has put together a roster through free agency that has achieved. You just look at the three receivers at the top. One, two, three. Yeah. Which, one, which one don't you want? Kirk? Jones, Ingram, are you kidding? And then Brandon Sheriff and the way that he has played. Um, you know, you could combine the free agent Foyer, class. Arden Key. Foyer, uh, I mean, 100%. Yeah. These guys in a, a, a science or an art, if you call it, a free agency that we've detailed, John, is a very difficult way to build a roster. And yet, they've done it. The personnel yeah. department here has done it. This is a better free agent class because it puts them in a position in one year to launch themselves into the playoffs, potentially, but also for the next three or four years. Guys like Roy Robertson-Harris and Sean Jenkins, they're key contributors for a football team right now in the next two or three years. Look pretty good with this class. Yeah, and they have some tough decisions on those fronts because when you sign free agents – it's by definition hard to keep those guys through durations of contracts yep. just because of the way stuff's set up. But what's been remarkable is, especially the three receivers, and you know, Aluakon and Arden Key and the guys you mentioned have been remarkable contributors. Um, but to put together wide receivers who come in and fit into an offense and produce this quickly, it's rare and it's hard, especially to have the three guys be the keys. I mean yeah. – they are the offense. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. Uh, I I would have told you it probably wouldn't happen, um, but it, it did. And, and probability would have been on your side just based on history since yeah. free agency began. And don't don't forget Leon and Keenan though. 
when you're talking about great oh, free agent classes. No, that was great. That was, uh, to me, those are the three. And Natron Means came in that year, too, although he was a street free yeah. agent. 96, because of the impact of those two guys, because those yeah. guys argue in the top 10 of all time, you know, top 10, 15 players here. Better doubt. Uh, and then uh, 2017, and then this class, I think, are the three that you point to with uh, free agent classes. And I think this one's the best. But that's my hot take mm-hmm. for today. When we come back... Some closing thoughts here on a Monday, setting up the week. And as we mentioned, Houston and nine consecutive losses to the Texans stand in the way of the Jaguars putting themselves in a position to finish it off next week and have a winning record. We'll talk about that when we return. Jaguars fans, huddle up for the best defense against expensive car repairs, CarShield. Score big with the nation's number one automotive protection company, CarShield. They offer affordable plans that cover over 6,000 parts and systems in your car, truck, or SUV. Don't miss any Jaguars action this season with a car breakdown. Call the MVPs at CarShield for the best coverage ever. Call 800-471-1223. 800-471-1223. Go Jags! At Five Star Credit Union, you inspire them to go the extra mile to meet your financial needs. That's why they offer Jaguars fans more banking options like better rates and no hidden fees. Their team is also dedicated to making the communities they serve stronger, volunteering their time and talents while donating millions to local nonprofits. Five Star Credit Union, fivestarcu.org. Go Jags! This holiday season, unwrap a brand new DreamFinders home. You'll enjoy everything that makes the holidays merry and bright with family and friends in an expertly built, energy-efficient DreamFinders home. What could be better than calling one of St. John's County's magnificent communities such as Shearwater, Beacon Lake, or Silverleaf home as 2022 comes to a close and an exciting new year begins? Plus, with an interest rate lock special from DreamFinders Homes, the timing is perfect to be in a gorgeous move-in ready home. Happy holidays to all from DreamFinders Homes. Visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Well, Magellan moves the freight. Magellan Transport, voted coolest office space in Jacksonville, and you can apply online at www.MagellanLogistics.com, and you can help Magellan Transport Logistics move the freight. Brian and John, back to close out the show. Okay, a couple of storylines this week, John. Uh, nine straight losses, as we've mentioned a couple yeah. of times. It's going to be overbearing. Um the playoff possibilities, and then this, which is this game essentially means nothing. And so the debate will rage in spaces like this. Are you better to have your guys sit this week, those that you can sit, and put it all all those chips on the middle of the table for the uh, the Titans season finale, or do you just keep playing like you're playing? Yeah, and I think – Doug is go, will err for the most part on the side of uh, of playing, um, because first of all, I don't think the playoffs. I don't think you can rest guys as long as there is a sliver of chance at a wild card, and there is, and, and there will be going into that game. Uh, I think if, no, since Miami lost yesterday, it's still mathematically possible. Um, and then uh, the Chargers tonight kind of come into it a little bit. They could be. You know, I think because of the weirdness of the NFL, and we've all seen Week 18 games that all of a sudden are are worth something. I would be surprised because Doug has been involved in late season stuff before, so he knows how weird it can get. Right. I I'm not saying that he won't rest anybody on on Sunday if if there's some nicks and stuff, but I, if there's a sliver of a chance. I don't think you want to be sitting there at the end of the season having rested and given away a chance in a league that gets really – remember Green Bay went into yesterday 100%. 100% chance. All of a sudden everybody loses, right. and they're sort they of in their the way. driver's seat. Fell their way. So uh, my thinking is with Doug having been through it in Philly so often that he'll air that way. Well, and I think when you look at it from that perspective – the possibility of another conference win, let alone another division win. And then there's – not that this matters a lot, but this is a team that's lost double digits, right? Right. For four straight years now, 18, 19, 20, 21. Um, I think a winning record is something that, that Doug Peterson would like to get established here. And he mentioned that in the post postgame uh, on on Thursday. A uh, chance to go 9-8. and eight. Yeah, it means and something. Yeah, it, it 
D- yes, it does. And Doug understands, I think, sort of what s- uh, symbolism on those kind of things yep. means. Uh, on, on a couple fronts, nice to go nine and eight. Nice to potentially go, what would it be, four and two in the division? 100%. Uh, get that Texans thing out. Now you've beaten all the division teams right. going into it. Um, now, again, sometimes when we talk about these things, you think everything's either or. Okay, they're going to rest all their stars. Well, you can't. So it might be one or two guys that are really dealing with something. I don't think you will see a baseball hat game yeah. where everybody's on the sidelines wearing Thank caps you and kind of, you know, screwing around. I don't I, I don't think you will see that out of this team. All right. Uh, another week leading up to a holiday. Another week leading up to a Jaguars game of significance. And they find themselves sitting in the four spot right now in the AFC. It doesn't get much more fun than this, folks. Thanks for joining us here on Monday. Thanks to our entire production crew for Joe, for Cho, for Blake, and all the folks that make this show work, especially the day after Christmas. Hats off. We certainly appreciate the effort. And we will talk to you on Wednesday morning with another Jags Drive Time.